The following program was produced by a community producer and does not reflect the views or opinions of the PAC-TV staff or the PAC-TV Board of Directors. The content contained herein is the sole responsibility of the community producer. Welcome to another edition of Nook News. I'm Beth Hadfield, the Activity Coordinator at the Center for Active Living. And today we are going to talk about the spring semester of Bridgewater State University Senior College. Um, I have quite a few guests today, as you can see. So we're going to start with Michelle Brady. And she's going to talk a little bit about our partnership with Bridgewater State. Thank you, Beth. Um, I'm so honored to be here and equally as honored to be in partnership with such an esteemed college, local, our university, Bridgewater State University. Jen and I um, met and got together over a year ago with the idea that we were going to bring to Plymouth Seniors lifelong learning, the opportunity for to engage in higher education and informative, educational, intellectual, and fun classes at, at Bridgewater State University. Um, Pre-COVID, we did have it set up where classes would take place here. Unfortunately, right now that's not happening. Of course, it's virtual, but I am thrilled with our partnership and I am so honored that Cal is able to um, enjoy, bring to our seniors in our community senior college. So thank you for being here, everyone. Next, I would like to introduce Jennifer. Um, Jennifer Reed from Bridgewater State University. Hi, Beth. Thank you so much for having me here today. Um, I'm so happy to be able to talk with you about our senior college. We started this initiative over two years ago um, at the direction of the president of the university, Fred Clark. He asked our team to create a dynamic university program that will improve active aging and provide a meaningful opportunity for learning for the seniors in our service region. And he feels very strongly that senior college is part of the overall mission of the university. And it represents a clear commitment to regional engagement and long-term learning. We are um, you know, happy to be able to have this partnership with Cal. It's a very important partnership. 20% of our participants last semester were from the town of Plymouth and we're really hoping to grow um, the offering so that more seniors can take advantage of the program. Um, the program is offered as short-term non-credit educational courses that are offered for fun and learning. There's no tests, there's no assignments, there's no writing papers. Um, lots of our classes will have things that folks can do outside of class, um, like, you know, readings or watching videos or even practicing specific tasks, um, but it really is just learning for fun. It's open to everyone. You don't need to have any college experience. You don't need to be an alumni of Bridgewater. It's really an open access program, so anyone can, can participate. This semester, we're thrilled to be able to offer uh, 33 virtual courses like this on Zoom, and we have a real variety. So you'll hear from some of the instructors that are teaching courses this semester, but you can also, of course, go on our website and learn about the wide variety. We really pride ourselves in having um, a diversity of offerings so that there's something for everyone. Our instructors are um, practitioners. They're people from the community. A lot of our faculty teach courses. Um, even some of our seniors who have participated in the program are now facilitating courses. Um, so if you are you know, into something that's super academic and serious, we have those kinds of courses. Or if you're looking to learn a new skill, for instance, we have a class this semester on basic American sign language. We have another class on origami. Um, and then we have the whole slate of you know, really interesting courses about literature and history and cultural things going on in our um, you know, nation right now with the election and all that kind of thing too. 
Um, the cost of the program is $65. It's a one-time uh, fee per semester, and that entitles participants to take as many classes as they'd like. So unlike any other senior living program, ours is uh, by far the most affordable program, and we have folks that are taking seven, eight, ten, even more classes. And regularly, I'm hearing from our seniors who are um, so happy that during this, you know, unprecedented time of extended stay at home, that they have, um, you know, an opportunity to learn and keep their minds engaged, and then also to meet new people. So regularly, I'm seeing people connect via Zoom and have, um, you know, opportunity for socialization that they wouldn't had, they wouldn't have had any um, in any other setting. So that's been a secondary benefit it for sure. Um, I only actually have one question. Is there an age limit? Is there a minimum age that people have to sign up? So the program is marketed towards people over 50. And for the most part, um, I think last semester we had one or two people in their late 40s who signed up. They had been newly um, laid off due to COVID. And so they wanted something to keep engaged and keep some structure. So we certainly encourage people 50 and over to participate, but we don't have, um, you know, we don't turn anyone away. Um, last semester, our oldest uh, participant was 92. And for the majority of the program, um, most of the folks are in their 60s, 70s, and then about 20% of the folks are in their 80s. So mostly traditionally aged seniors. The, my last question for you before we move on to some of the instructors is, um, is there an opportunity for any kind of a stipend should um, it, the money situation be an issue for anyone in the community? Absolutely. So I would encourage anyone to email me directly. Um, again, it's Jennifer Reed of Bridgewater State University. You can, you know, find me or, you know, I'm happy to give my email perhaps at the end of this um, conversation today. And so we don't want the cost to be prohibitive for anyone. And so we have full scholarships available and people just have to reach out to me and it's just between me and that person and it's done privately. So please don't let the fee be an issue for anyone. Awesome. Thank you. That, that's a lot of information, all good information. Um, we're very excited. Um, I'd like to move on to some of the instructors. Um, Dave Kendi, I'd like to begin with you, if you could introduce yourself and talk a little bit about what you're going to be teaching. Dave, you need to unmute yourself. Can, can you hear me now? I can. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I'm Dave Kindy. I am a multimedia journalist. I work at the Old Colony Memorial, and I'm also a freelance writer. Uh, I write for a number of different uh, magazines and websites. Uh, I write for Smithsonian. Uh, I write for World War II magazine, uh, American History, Vietnam magazine, military history. Uh, I have an avid fascination in history, which, uh, and, and I guess some people like what I write. So um, they, uh, uh, I, I've become uh, kind of, I guess, popular as a, uh, as a writer. And um, this course will be, it's kind of evolving as we speak. I, I'm kind of looking at it as like my favorite articles, uh, but it's, the way it's gonna break out is uh, the way I'm planning on it is that I wrote a series of articles for Smithsonian about different products uh, that started out as something else before they became what they are today. Like Play-Doh was actually wallpaper cleaner. Um, so there's, a, and there's, a, there's a whole series of things like that. I'm gonna devote one session uh, to that about how these different products evolve from what they were not, <laughs> what they started out was, which was something completely different. And it's a fascinating history about many of these things. Uh, I also plan to uh, delve into some of uh, some of my other writing, um, which has been, uh, I just recently wrote an article about uh, Jimmy Stewart uh, and the, uh, and It's a Wonderful Life and the impact of his uh, uh, combat career on his acting, how it, how it changed him as a person and how it affected his acting in that movie. There's several scenes that take place in the movie that were directly uh, affected by what he experiences as a combat pilot in, in World War II. So uh, very fascinating stuff. 
And there's a series of other uh, articles that I've written that I, that I think are interesting and I think some other people will find interesting. Most of it is on military history, but it's uh, in a general sense. Uh, one of the fellows that uh, I find absolutely fascinating was this uh, Finnish uh, gentleman who would have been 100 years old last year. He's, he's dead now. Uh, he started out as a Finnish soldier in World War II. He ended up in the German uh, uh, SS and then became one of our top Green Berets fighting in Vietnam for the United States. Uh, and he's buried at Arlington National Cemetery and just a, an incredibly uh, amazing story. And uh, I thought I would end my session um, with some of the people that I've gotten to speak with. Uh, I've talked with a number of World War II veterans, uh, just, just fascinating people. Uh, I've also gotten to speak with uh, people like David McCullough and uh, Nathaniel Philbrick and a few other uh, authors. And I can offer some insight into who these people are and, uh, and what they're like in to, to get to know in person. And I thought that might be interesting for some, uh, some listeners as well too. So have you always been like a natural historian? Like has it been something that has always interest you in your life growing history up? Is, yeah, history has always uh, fascinated me. Uh, I've, uh, <laughs> I used to read a lot of uh, uh, historical nonfiction uh, earlier in my life. And then I started reading his history nonfiction. And I realized the real story was actually more interesting to me and more exciting than what was being written in historical nonfiction. Uh, the, when you get to know some of the people and the circumstances that they, were, they, they faced at these key moments in history, uh, it's just, uh, it just exhilarates me. And so I, you know, and I, and I try to express that in my writing as well, too, about how fun and interesting or exciting this, this event is. I can hear it in my conversation with you. I, I, I love that. I think that's an amazing thing. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate it. So Dave's course is called Everything You Need to Know About Fun, Quirky, and Obscure American History. And it starts on Tuesday, April 6th from 2 to 3 p.m. And it lasts for four weeks. I'm going to have to ask my boss for that time off because I would like to sign up for that. <laughs> me too, me too. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate it. Matt, I would like to move on to you. Um, I would like you to discuss what you're going to be teaching and, and what it's all about. And sure. obviously introduce yourself and tell us who you are, sorry. <laughs> sure, yeah, sure, sure, thanks. Thank you so much, Beth, for uh, inviting me on today. And, and thank you for uh, Jen and Vinny for inviting me to do this, uh, this course. It's very exciting for me. I, I've been a, um, a lifelong uh, believer in senior health and I've been in uh, almost over four decades now involved with seniors in different capacities where it's uh, either skilled nursing homes or assisted livings or rest homes, home care, et cetera. So um, I, I thought with my background, I'm a licensed nursing home administrator, licensed by the Commonwealth for over 30 years. And I thought it'd be interesting to go through um, what, I, what I like to call, this is not your grandma's nursing home anymore. Um, and what it's like for, uh, for folks, particularly baby boomers that are coming of age, um, what, is a, what is a skilled nursing home re and rehab center? What is that all about? Uh, what is assisted living? How does that differ from, um, from uh, a skilled nursing center? Home care, what are the options for home care? Now, you would think that me being a nursing home administrator <laughs> that I would want people to go to nursing homes. I don't. Most of us want people to stay home and to stay home as long as possible. And we're going to talk about that. And, you know, how do you actually, you know, how do you do that? The finances behind it. How do you afford to do that? What's Medicaid, MassHealth, Medicare all about? What are the private insurances all about? And we'll also talk about um, elder law is becoming bigger and bigger now. And, and people are doing a lot more planning around that. So we're going to have uh, some, we're going to make this very interactive. We're going to have some uh, guests come on the, the show with me. Somebody who owns a home care company. Um, somebody who is a licensed nursing home administrator, um, somebody that uh, is an elder law attorney. Um, so we want to make this we want to make this uh, interactive. And uh, I actually I am managing partner of a company called Eisenstein Flaherty Associates, and we are a senior living management consulting company. 
So we have some people that are in the field that we'll be able to bring on and actually talk about what's happening now. One of the things we're dealing with now is what is what are nursing homes, assisted livings and rest homes, what do they look like January 2020? And what do they look like now? And how are they gonna change forever in the future because of COVID? So uh, our classes are gonna be on, um, they're gonna start April 5th at one o'clock. Um, they're gonna be for four Mondays, except for Patriots Day. So we'll go to the first Monday uh, of May. So we hope people will turn in, tune in and uh, have some fun and uh, again, make it very inter interactive. I think personally, that's a very important topic, especially in um, today's day and age. I think there are a lot of people that have lots of questions and it sounds like you're really going to be able to answer them. I know you have tons of experience in that field and um, I think it'll be a great class. Um, I wish you luck. And you and I used to work together years we ago. We did. We yeah, did. Yes, yep. That's how I got to be here. Yeah. Jen, what's the name of the course? I, <laughs> I was just saying, thinking we should have named it Not Your Grandma's Nursing Home. I, know, I like that. <laughs> we named it, the name of your course is Orientation to Senior Living Healthcare. Yeah, thank you. All right. I'd like to move on and I would like to now talk with Vinny. And I'd like Vinny to tell us about what he's going to be teaching and what his course is all about. Hello, Beth, and thank you so much for having uh, me on Nook News. It's, it's a privilege. Uh, as some of you may know, I am not a, in the legislature anymore. I am now at Bridgewater State University, and I'm the director of regional partners uh, or re regional partnerships. Um, and so what I do here is work with, you know, different state agencies, municipalities, businesses um, to let people know what's happening at Bridgewater State University. Um, and, and from that, uh, because I'm at Bridgewater, Jen asked me if I would teach a course uh, here with the senior college. And I just thought what a great opportunity to share um, my 20, 21 years that I spent in the Massachusetts legislature. And so the title of my course is Civics 101, um, but it's much more than just the basics of government. My, my thought is in the first class, and I'll do four classes, uh, it starts on February 23rd, and the first class will be about uh, the frameworks of government, talking about the local, the state, and the federal government, and how, you know, how government is together. Um, I'll probably uh, allow some conversation at the end of the class, so I will kind of talk a little bit, but then open it up for questions. Um, the next one, I will discuss the legislative process and how it works. And if he, here, of course, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about uh, the state level and, and how my experience in the legislature, how things went through the process, the committee hearings, the, the committees themselves, what they cover, uh, what, what the issues are, uh, a little bit about when I served on the budget committee and the budget process and how it went through this very lengthy process from January all the way to July, deciding what our state budget is going to look like. And, um, and then uh, on the third class, I'm going to talk about how you would organize an effective campaign. Um, and it, depending on what the issues are, um, obviously I had 11 election cycles that I ran for office, um, but I was also involved in a lot of other campaigns and I will share with you what I think is an effective way to run a campaign, an effective way to lobby legislators like Matt um, and, and what works. And so I think that uh, that's uh, from, from my perspective, it'll give you some insight. Um, and then lastly, it's going to be opening after the last three shows, I'm going to be reaching out to you, uh, the audience and ask you what, what are the, the, in this last week, what would you like to talk about um, and maybe I could share with some, some insight from what I've experienced uh, in my time in state government. And so that's a little bit about what my class is going to be ab uh, about. But again, I want to encourage you all to think about participating in, uh, in this senior college, because as you just saw, uh, just the, the, the two individuals that you saw here sharing what they, they are going to be talking about, just um, incredibly interesting topics, not to mention the, you know, all of the other types of topics that you you can learn so much um, from being involved in senior colleges, some really talented instructors. Um, and so I just wanted to encourage you to participate. I guarantee you, you will find it well worth your time and effort. So thank you very much for having me. Thanks, Vinny. 
Um, you know, I think Vinny brought up a good point that um, there are a lot of classes that we are offering, that BSU is offering. And um, it, it is a sort of a pop, a pay one price and participate in as many classes as they would like and, and fit into their schedule. And I think that's the really important part. And I know Michelle and I have discussed this immensely. Um, in the current times, people are looking for more to do. And um, I think this is a perfect example of having more to do, challenging themselves, getting education and learning and all of those things that keep our mind active and, and truly do keep us young. Um, and I, I think, I think people are forgetting certain things in the time that we're in because it, it's a lot to deal with, but I also think we need a little bit of an escape. And I, um, I think the opportunity to learn and um, challenge ourselves is, is a great way to do that. Um, so, is there anything that anybody would like to add? Jen, it looks like you want to add something. Yes, of course. Um, thank you so much. I think you really hit the nail on the head with, you know, using this time to learn something new. You know, I get a lot of feedback from people that say it helps them to have structure and feel productive. So um, thank you for those remarks. A couple of things that I wanted to say was one that um, we didn't, uh, last semester we didn't offer this. So this is a new thing. So every session of every course is actually going to be recorded. Um, and we know because we've, you know, we've gotten feedback from our members and we hear that people have busy lives and they have appointments and, you know, things that they're obligated to do. So if you sign up for a course and you miss a session, you can go back later and watch it on demand. So that's, that's a big um, change for us. And we're really excited to be, ha be able to offer that. The other piece is that, you know, we will come back in person someday and we will do so at the Center for Active Living. And I want people to know that. But this pandemic has shown us that we need to think bigger and broader and reach a, you know, a larger audience. We have members now from Florida and North Carolina and New Hampshire, we're really excited about that. And we are also able to have instructors, you know, people are really busy. So teaching us a course on Zoom once a week for four weeks is a little easier than traveling to, you know, us, the Bridgewater Public Library or to the Center for Active Living. So we will always have a portion of our program be like this on, on you know, on Zoom going forward and we will come back in person because I can tell you having had one semester fully in person with the senior college it was transformative I mean I developed so many close relationships with our participants and the faculty developed close relationships and we understand that that's important and so we're just asking people to consider joining now get to know us from the comfort of your own home and then consider um, when, we're, when it's safe to do so, we can come back and have classes in person over there at the beautiful Center for Active Living. Michelle, did you wanna say something? I just wanted to dovetail um, in what Jen had touched on earlier. You know, social isolation is very real, um, regardless whether there's COVID happening in our world or not. But particularly because of COVID, we are all isolated and as seniors, more so. I think it's important that you and Beth said it and Jen said it and our wonderful instructors are going to engage your minds and it keeps you fresh and it keeps you learning. I think it's a great opportunity to learn something and to keep to keep the, those, those ideas flowing. But it's also an incredible opportunity to just look beside you, of course on a screen, but to meet new people. You don't have an opportunity today to meet new people very often. This, from the privacy of your own home, is an opportunity to engage your mind and to engage your spirit in interacting with others. And that's as equally as important, both of them. So I encourage you to sign up. 
You can call Cal if you need any information, if you need help doing so, we are absolutely here for you. But this is an incredible opportunity and I hope the seniors in Plymouth take advantage of it. And thank you to our guests, amazing. I wanna take all of your classes, truly. You may see me, I'll, I'll, I'll hide my video, but you may see me. <laughs> I agree with Michelle. I have read through the list of courses and I just love them. Um, I thought they were amazing. And I too, like Michelle, wanted to take all of the classes. Only unfortunately, I still work full time. Little bit of a problem, but you know, it works out. Um, I cannot thank all of my guests today. Each of you are wonderful, incredible, and amazing. Um, thank you, Dave Kendi, Matt Muratori, and Vinny DiMacito for sharing your knowledge with our community and so much so and, and wanting to have your own class to be able to share what you know. Uh, Michelle, as always, thank you for being our director. We, we do amazing things here and we bring everything we can to our community that we possibly can. And thank you, Jennifer, for heading up the senior college for us. Um, we will have um, Jennifer's email running at the bottom of the screen. So you will be able to write it down and um, be able to contact them. We'll also put in a phone number um, so everyone will be able to reach everyone. I would like to thank you all, cannot thank you enough for being here today and for making this show as wonderful as it is.